Hey guys, Max19, welcome back to another tryout. Today's tryout is the follow-up for season three. Uh, the camera looks different, it's in a different position so I can view all, look at all these games, physical copies for games that I played in season three. Isn't that great? Uh, if you don't know what a follow-up is, at the end of every season of tryouts for the 52nd episode of the season, I do an episode where I look back at all of the games I passed throughout the season and reevaluate essentially go okay well did I play more of them and when I did did I enjoy them and so that's what the show is and I'll not delay and ramble too much we can just get right into the the, the list here for season three the first episode was Elden Ring and I passed Elden Ring I've played a quite a bit more of Elden Ring since I think I've got like hundred plus hours into Elden Ring, but I've not quite finished it. I've gotten to the Halid Tree. The next like story boss I have to fight is the Fire Giant, I believe. And I decided I want to do the Halid Tree first. And so I'm trying to get through the Halid Tree and maybe fight Melania first. I don't know if I'll actually do it in that order, but I know that after Fire Giant, there's some major changes to the environment. So I'm trying to do things before those changes happen, but I'm going to finish it eventually. And I think I might stream it now that I have a good setup for streaming directly through my PC. But I've not been streaming a lot lately, so it really depends. I'm not sure. No promises. The next pass of the season was Hand of Fate. And with Hand of Fate, it's not a game I've gone back to because I've noticed that with these types of games, these roguelike type games, I just have a tendency to never come back to them. I just sort of play some for the episode. Sometimes I might play a little bit more after that. And then it's like, okay, I don't like starting over from the beginning every time or whatever so I'm just not gonna play this anymore I don't know that I'll play Hand of Fate again can't remember if I still have it installed on my Xbox roguelikes don't often hold my attention for very long I don't know that I, this is one that I'll keep playing even though I do think it's a I did think it was an interesting game when I played it the next pass was hyper light drifter this one I should get back to eventually I probably still have it installed on my my PC I can't remember for sure but I haven't played it since the tryout. I don't think it's uh, it's an interesting game with an interesting aesthetic. I've just been playing all sorts of other games throughout the year. So I just end up playing something else instead. There definitely wasn't part of a lamp in front of the, the video for, for a second there. I think I finished everything I had to say about Hyperlight Drifter there, so let's move on to the next one, which was Aerial Knights Never Yield. This is a game that I finished the story mode on and I was playing it. I thought about putting it in like the wrap ups bites, but I really don't want to rag too much on games that have single devs. It's just that like, as much as I like the game, it's very janky. There's a lot of like weird issues I ran into here and there while I was finishing it. And I don't know how well the gameplay style fits what it's doing overall. You know, this like Eldenless Runner thing mixed with like narrative elements like that. I do like the, the aesthetics and I do like Endless Runners and all that. And so I really appreciate the game, but I didn't want to like put it on blast. So I'm putting it in this episode instead because that's just where it goes. It's fine. Check it out if uh, you're interested. I think it was free through Amazon recently. I don't remember. The next game that I passed was Ghostwire Tokyo right here. I played this for a while after because I do like just exploring these open world environments and really getting into the traversal and stuff like that. But I sort of got distracted by other games, so I've not played a lot of it since. I should come back to it at some point. I plan to, to finish the story and all that, but I've just been distracted with other games, even like playing other games on the PlayStation or whatever. And so eventually I'll come back to it. But uh, I don't know. I don't know when. The next pass was Dirt Showdown. This was part of the big rally games video that I did there, and I played a bit more of Dirt Showdown afterwards. And it's fun. It's just like I'm a lot more into Forza the Horizon series in particular. So if I have a itch to play a car game, I'm more likely to go and load up Forza Horizon. Three, which is the one I'm playing through right now, and drive around Australia instead of popping open Dirt Showdown and doing like a specific 
race or anything. And so I uninstalled Dirt Showdown not that long ago, a little while ago, just because I was like, I think I'm done with this game. I'm just going to keep playing Forza instead. And there was a similar story with Dirt 5, but like I didn't play it anymore after the episode on either console. I played it both on PS5 and the Xbox Series X, so I could do a little comparison on that. And I've not played it more on either platform, and I don't believe I still have it installed on either platform, because like I said, I just play, I largely play Forza, and that scratches my driving games itch for the most part. And so I just pick up, if I'm like, I want to drive around in, in a video game, I just pick up Forza Horizon 3 as of right now. The next game that passed a tryout was Slay the Spire. I feel like I played more Slay the Spire after the episode, but I can't really remember. I keep getting told that I should play more of it because I have some friends who are into Slay the Spire and talk about it, and it's like, you should play more. And it's like, maybe someday, I don't know. I think it's still installed wherever I have it, so maybe I'll get back into it at some point, but it's, again, with the roguelikes, I just fall off of them very quickly, typically. The next game that passed was Backbone, and I finished Backbone. If you want to see my thoughts on that, there's a link in the card for the wrap-up spites number three. I talked about it in that video, so check that out. And then after that, the game that passed next was Going Under. This is another roguelike, and so it kind of falls into a similar situation with the other ones, but I actually did play quite a bit more of this. I got to the point where I've got the last level area unlocked so that I could go finish the game, but I wanted to do some other stuff before I went and did the end game stuff, and then I ended up just not playing it anymore after that because it's like, eh. I'm at a point where I'm like grinding, and it's not as interesting because I'm not making as much direct progress as I was before, and so I should go back and at least beat the game at some point, but I don't know if I'm actually going to do the, the different grinding tasks that I wanted to do before that. We'll see, though. Next after that was uh, Pokemon Legends Arceus. It's right there, I believe. And I didn't play it that much more after the episode until after Scarlet and Violet came out and I finished up playing Scarlet, which is the one that I played. And I was like, oh, let's go back and play more of Legend Arceus. And... I haven't played it in the last, like, week or two, I think, but I was playing it. That was a game that I was playing on my Switch for a bit there. And I'll probably go back to it. Like I said, I'll probably finish it at some point. It's really interesting how much better Pokemon Legends Arceus is in terms of, like, quality of life and even just, like, visually than Pokemon Scarlet and Violet are. It's just wild to me that those games came out the same year. The next game that I did a tryout on was Death Stranding. I specifically got like the director's cut upgrade so I could play the PS5 version because we had this PS4 copy for a while and we just didn't open it and play it. Uh, but I definitely plan to play more of Death Stranding. It's one of those games that like you have to play significant amounts of to really get into. I just haven't gotten back and sat down to play more of it because it is a sort of like long gaming session type of game. And you also have to be in like a particular mood for Death Stranding. It's a very like weird, melancholy hopefulness. And so it's like having this combination of being in that headspace and having a decent chunk of time and set aside that I've just not had come together since I did the episode. The next game that I passed was LEGO Batman 3, and LEGO Batman 3 I 100% after I did the tryout. Like, that was like the game I was playing for a bit after I did the tryout for it. And it's this thing where it's like LEGO games are a simple fun that like, for me, are nostalgic because I grew up playing them. And so I'll probably do another LEGO game somewhere in the future. Maybe it'll be like last year where I played it like around my the week of my birthday. That was the episode. So maybe I'll start another LEGO game this summer or maybe even before that. And I just play the 100% another one because they're not hard to 100%. And they do, they're just really satisfying adventures and simple and you don't have to think too hard about them and all that. They're video game video games, you know, they're like kind of classic feeling. I don't have to explain it myself to you. This is my show. <laughs> After that was uh, Sifu right here. I don't remember if I've played more since the episode. I'm not sure that I have. It's something that I keep meaning to play more of, but I think at the time I was playing Elden Ring still. And so I've stopped playing Elden Ring, but I haven't finished Elden Ring. I plan to come back to Elden Ring. So maybe after I finish Elden Ring, then I'll move on and play uh, Sifu because I have this tendency to play like one game in a genre at a time so that I don't get like 
screwed up on controls or anything. And so, like, maybe after I finish Elden Ring, I'll come back and I'll play Sifu, and that'll be my, like, hardcore action, quote-unquote, Souls-like thing that I play at that period. After that, I passed New Pokemon Snap over here. I've just been playing the other two uh, Pokemon games here, the this one. This one, I've not come back to New Pokemon Snap yet. I've just sort of been playing other games. Eventually, I'll probably get back to New Pokemon Snap, but like, it's not something that I feel really drawn to as much as the other Pokemon games like sucked me in. And the next game I passed after that was Team Sonic Racing. I've played it a little bit after, I believe. I'm just not that like drawn to that game as a kart racer. It's more just like, that's the kart racer I have installed on the PS5. So if I want to play a kart racer and I have to be on the PS5 and I don't have to go set up a different console to play on that. But like, generally, I don't play kart racers with other people very often. And so if like, I'm like, I want to play a kart racer, I'm going to grab the Switch and I'm going to play Mario Kart. That's how that goes. After that, I passed Post Void, which I play some here and there sometimes. It's a very easy game to pick up and play a little bit and then be done. But like, I'm not very good at it. Uh, I don't get very far, but it is still like just a vibe you just run through and like kill things and don't think too much about it. It's a very fast paced, frantic situation, which can be like really fun just for like this a momentary adrenaline rush thing. After Post Void, I pass Noita, Noita, Noita. I don't know how to pronounce it still. Noita. I do want to play more because it's a fun and ridiculous the way that like just things like explode and the, the very deep unexplained systems that the game has that like you just have to figure out. There's, there's a lot of fun in that. But like, as I mentioned already with roguelikes, I have a tendency to fall off them very quickly. And so like, I've not gone back much to Noita after the episode, but like I'll probably pick it up here and there sometimes. The next game was a uh, Digimon Survive. You can't you can't barely see it here. It's between these two. I've not played much more of it since the episode came out. I don't remember. I think something came out just afterwards and I started playing that instead. I'll probably come back to Digimon Survive after I finish Pokemon Legends Arceus. They're not the exact same genre of game, but they're like close enough that like that's sort of how that's going to go probably. And then after that, the next game I passed was What the Golf. I haven't played more of it, but it's like a fun, chill, simple game that I'll probably come back to if I need a fun, chill, simple puzzle game at some point. After that was God of War 2018. I ended up finishing the story and I have some critiques on just the general combat system and the difficulty scaling and some stuff. I probably won't get into now. I might make a video about it. I've been thinking about it, but the combat just doesn't quite mesh with me for whatever reason. I'm probably done with it now that I finished the story. I've considered streaming, trying to fight the Valkyries, but like, I don't know. I might, I'm, I'm considering it. And then the next game that I passed was JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Eyes of Heaven. I beat the story mode for Eyes of Heaven and it's really cool. There's a lot of missions I could go back and redo or like do extra missions and stuff, but I probably won't play too much more of it if uh, besides maybe going back to do those because there is no local multiplayer and it doesn't seem like there is an online for the game whatsoever. So like after I beat all the single player stuff, there's not much more for me to do there. And then following Eyes of Heaven, I acquired uh, All-Star Battle R. There's this bizarre adventure, All-Star Battle R. I pick it up periodically here and there. I don't have anyone to play fighting games with on the PlayStation, so I don't play it that much because there's just no one to play with, but I pick it up here and there sometimes when I'm feeling like, ah, I'm, I'm bored, I want to play JoJo fighting game. I mostly just keep an eye on the DLC and jump in and play when there's a new character to check the new character out, but not too much besides that as of right now. The next game that I passed was Wonder Boy the Dragon's Trap. And I keep meaning to play more of this one. It's, you know, on the Amazon launcher and I'm not sure uh, if I'll go back and finish it, but I do want to play more of it and see, you know, play just this reimagined version of a classic game. It's basically the same game with a new coat of paint, a really, a very good new coat of paint but I do plan to play more of it at least, even if I don't finish it.
The next game was Splatoon 3. I played a lot of Splatoon 3 after launch for a while, but I feel like after the first Splatfest, maybe, maybe even the second Splatfest, I started falling off, not playing as often, and now I really only jump in for the Splatfests. I don't play much else besides that, which means I'm probably not going to complete the catalog for chill season, but oh well. I just play other games. These live service games, they might suck me in for a while, but I eventually just find something else I'm interested in and don't play them as much. After that, we were getting into Halloween times, and so the next game that I passed was Condemned Criminal Origins. This game was significant because I believe I hit 100 subscribers because of it. I believe that was the game that pushed me over 100 subscribers, so that was cool. But as for horror games, I was focused on playing Deathmark, with with horror games, I generally have to play with my partner around because I the tense the attention can get too much for me to handle sometimes, and so having someone around, even if they're not like actively sitting next to me or anything, just like awake and nearby, can help with the tension not overwhelming me. And so I was playing Deathmark, which is something that I found to be very tense, even though it was just a visual novel. Now that I finished that, I probably will do Condemned Criminal Origins next, but I haven't played more since the episode. Next on the list of games that passed was Save Room. I finished Save Room, got all the achievements. It's really fun and simple puzzle game. I recommend people check it out. It's, you know, Resident Evil 4's inventory system, but as a puzzle game. That's, it's fun. Go check that out. The next game I want to talk about wasn't one that I passed, it was actually a game that I failed, and that was Sky Hill. I did actually end up playing more of the game afterwards, and I ended up bumping down to like easy difficulty or whatever it was, and finished the game a couple times, and it's like, yeah, okay. On the higher difficulties, it's too random to really like enjoy, I feel. But when you bump it down to normal and you can really get into like the mystery of the the narrative and it's like how it's different endings are like basically change the entire context of what's going on like it's got some interesting stuff it's it's uh, exploring but like i don't know if i recommend it but it might be interesting if you're willing to swallow your pride and play on like easy after that i passed ng I wanted to finish Deathmark before I played more of NG. I know that I don't think they're particularly connected narratively, but I believe that there's probably things in NG that reference at least Deathmark. So I wanted to finish Deathmark before playing more of NG, but now I'll probably play Condemned Criminal Origins before I get to NG. In the next episode uh, to talk about was the Left 4 Dead, Left 4 Dead 2, and Back 4 Blood episode. As for Left 4 Dead 1 and 2, I'm gonna talk about them together because I haven't played more of either of them. I do plan to at some point, but I feel like Left 4 Dead is particularly better with friends, so I haven't had a chance to get together with friends to play it as a group, but maybe at some point we'll do that. You know, I mean, I have a, I've played some of Left 4 Dead 2 in the past with friends, but not Left 4 Dead 1. And so it'd be cool to, to play together with friends. As for Back for Blood, I played it a bit more to try to give it a, like a fair shake. And I just got stuck on a bad run with the AI not like helping at all. And so I got really frustrated and I was like, screw this and I uninstalled it. I probably won't play it again, but like if a group operates, maybe I'll reinstall it and play with like a group that knows what they're doing, but probably not again by myself. After that was Stray right there, and I finished Stray. It's a real pleasant experience. I really enjoyed it. I probably, I've been planning to do a speedrun stream for the, there's an achievement for beating it under like an hour or something, I don't remember. And so I'm thinking about loading it up to do a live stream at some point, but I've not gotten around to doing that yet. And after that was uh, West of Dead which I've been playing here and there on the PC here. It's fun for the most part, but there's a lot of jank to it that sort of makes it a little unsatisfying sometimes. But like, it's interesting. I want to explore it more, you know? The next game that I passed was Devil May Cry. Uh, not specifically this part of this Xbox 360 
collection, but on Xbox One version of this collection that I played, I did a Double My Cry, just the first game, and I haven't played more of it, I've just been playing other games, and eventually I'll get back to it. Um, I'm currently playing Hi-Fi Rush, really, and so maybe once I finish Hi-Fi Rush on the Xbox, I'll come back and try more of Double May Cry since they're, you know, a related genre. But I don't know. Probably get back to it because I kind of want to play the rest of the series a little bit at least. Next up with Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. I got both Scarlet and Violet here. So I, I played Scarlet particularly. And my girlfriend played Violet. I made it all the way through the game to the post game. I didn't quite finish the Pokedex and I just sort of stopped after doing the Area Zero stuff and running around a little bit, I have not started the Gym Leader rematch stuff. That's where I am in terms of post-game. And I'll, I'm just kind of waiting to hear that they've patched the performance stuff to make performance stuff better, which I haven't heard yet. I'll probably come back to it when there's a patch to make it less bad. But as of right now, I'm just waiting. After Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, we had that Stalker Roundup episode, and I passed two of the games in that episode, both Shadow of Chernobyl and Clear Sky. I haven't played any more of either game as of right now. They're also kind of like specific mood types of games. They're like classic PC shooter game thing, you know? You may think of like a PC game shooter. They're like the epitome of that idea. And I feel like you gotta be in a certain mood for that and that I haven't really found myself in again. But at some point I'll probably go back and play some more of them. The next game that passed after that was Blasphemous, which I just haven't gone back to. And I keep meaning to, I keep thinking about it. It's like, ah, oh, I should play Blasphemous more. But I just haven't done it yet. It's partly because I've not been playing games on PC as much as I had been just because I'm not in here, just sitting here. When I was working before, at my job before, I just had time where I could sit here and play games. And I just don't, I do this on a daily basis now, so I don't play games as much on the computer. After that, I passed Death Road to Canada, which once again, it's the roguelike thing. I've just not come back and played any more of it. This is a situation though, where since it's like four player co-op or whatever, I imagine this plays better with friends. And so like, I'd want to play it with friends and not just by myself. After that was Crash Bandicoot. That was the next game to that path. Well, the, the entire Insane Trilogy, I did every game, but I don't really have that much interest in playing more of any of them. Don't know what it is, but I'll probably play more of them eventually. But as of right now, I'm just not that interested in going back and playing more of any of the games that much really. So I don't know if I will. The next game that passed after that, we were getting to snowy time. So, uh, Grand Mountain Adventure, which was a snowy game. I played a bit more of it because it's got like a chill vibe. It's fun. You just snowboard or ski down a mountain. It's simple. There's minimal consequences. It's just a chill, relaxy type game. And it's a, again, like a situation where it's like, if I'm looking for a chill, relaxy type game, then I'll probably play Grand Mountain Adventure or something like it. After that was uh, Yotun that passed and I keep meaning to come back to Yotun, haven't yet, but I keep meaning to come back and finishing it so that I have like an understanding of like it on a bigger picture. So I had some criticisms in the video. I have a feeling that just like games on the Amazon launcher, I just consistently forget about because it's, it's the Amazon launcher. After Yotun, the next game that passed was Frozen Cortex, a part of the video I did on both Frozen Synapse and Frozen Cortex. I probably won't play Frozen Cortex ever again. I had a lot of fun with the little bit that I played of it and for the episode, and so I did end up passing it. But in all honesty, like, I probably am not going to play this game again. I think it's still installed, but like, I don't know. It was fun for what I played it when I played it, but I, I probably not going to play it. I'm just probably not going to play it again. After that was Hi-Fi Rush, which I've played a lot more of. I finished the main game. I think I finished half of the Spectra challenges for the post game. I highly recommend Hi-Fi Rush to people, especially if you already have Game Pass. It's just on Game Pass, but it's also not very expensive. Go out, go play Hi-Fi Rush. Just go play it. It's, it's really good. And then the next game that passed was Tiny Metal, which I've been playing here and there. It's kind of like the game I'm playing on Switch right now. I don't know that I'll really finish it or not, but I've just been trucking through just to see how it goes, but I haven't really gotten 
that far still. Uh, I think I just finished Act 1. I don't know how many acts there are, but I believe I finished the Act 1 missions. The next game that I played featured an episode with uh, this one here, but not that game. The next game was Evil Dead. I haven't gotten around to playing this again. It's been w much too soon since the video came out. Uh, the video was literally last week. I'll probably play more of it at some point eventually. I don't know, I like I, I can be hit or miss with these life service multiplayer games in terms of playing them frequently or long term or whatever. So yeah, uh, conclusion time. My last points for the video. I've, that's, that's all the passes. So uh, another year, another several games. I don't know exactly how many because I did a variety of multi-game episodes this season. So more than 51 games. I don't know exactly how many, uh, but here we go. We, we completed another season. I actually got sucked into a couple different competitive multiplayer games across the year. It started with Halo Infinite last year. I played it throughout the last year and I've slowly fallen off of these. I started playing Fortnite again last year. I'm not playing it like every day, but you know, I still play that periodically, as well as Splatoon 3. So I have these three multiplayer games that I'm sort of juggling to an extent, playing here and there. But I really only pop into these games when like events happen or there's like something to do. I got sucked into those games a bit over the last year and I've fallen out of them as we're approaching now. But they sort of took up some of the time I could have been playing the other games that I had started playing. However, I have, I really played a lot of games this year, like even outside of the games I did for tryouts, I've played some other things as well. Some stuff that I'm going to make videos on, some stuff that I have already talked about in videos. I finished a lot of tryout games from pre previous seasons um, that I had started. You can see more of those in that wrap ups and bites. Uh, episode three I talked about earlier. I have like, multiple thousand games, like over 2,000 games at least, just like digitally. And I'm never gonna get to all of them, but the point of this show is, you know, trying to get to as many of them as possible, at least try them, at least check them out. And so that's why I keep doing it. And I will continue to keep doing it, even if it's not the most fulfilling thing for me to edit anymore. Uh, they're generally not too long and don't take that long to edit for the most part, so they're not like a hassle. Anyway, no tryout next week. As is usual, I take a break week after the season is done, but then we'll be back for tryouts the week after. That's the video. I uh, don't have anything else to say, so we'll get to the end of the video, the the ending. Uh, go to the description. You can find a beacons.ai link. It will take you to my beacons.ai with all my links on it. Patreon, Bandcamp, Redbubble, etc. Click those links, see what you're doing in all those places. Like the video if you liked it, dislike if you didn't. Subscribe if you want to keep up with this and other shows. I do all sorts of stuff on the channel pretty regularly. Most of the time, like twice a week, maybe more, maybe less, depending on the week. So go subscribe, uh, leave a comment. What did you think? Have you checked out any of the games I talked about this season? Um, have you checked out any of the games I talked about in this uh, video? Leave a comment, let me know, share the video, do the things, do the things. Anyway, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye!